Do you start your arting sessions with a little snack? Well, I would have, but chose to have a post-painting reward instead. That's right, I pulled a time fake out on you, because this actually took place after finishing the project. That's why there are pigment stains and bits of bleed-proof white on my hands. And I earned that reward because this piece turned out pretty well. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Hi, I'm Irene, and this is the Inkwork Studio. Mmm, pumpkin pie-flavored Kit Kat. Other than a PSL a couple of weeks ago, this is our first real seasonal treat. As autumn progresses, I look forward to nabbing a box or two of Little Debbie's Pumpkin Delights and maybe a bottle of pumpkin pie cream liqueur. Never had it before, but I've heard good things. You just got a brief look at the concept sketch complete with notations. <laughs> and you were probably wondering, what the heck is that? It's an overhead view of a bar of soap. I watch several soap makers on YouTube, and I've wanted to try painting one of their more decorative-looking creations. This particular design was inspired by a recent video on the Ellen Ruth Soap channel, and it depicts the decorative piping that goes on top. If you'd like to know more, follow the link in the description. I also follow Royalty Soaps, Missouri River Soap, Ophelia's Soapery, and Eden's Secret. Yeah, I'm kind of into it. Not that I've ever made soap, it actually intimidates me, but I'm fascinated by the process, especially the pouring and the slicing. I used a colored pencil to draw the design onto Fluid 100 cold-pressed watercolor paper. Several of the mood-setting items had been gifted to me over the years. The coffee cup in the bottom left has been my favorite mug for a long time. Even a chip on the rim hasn't changed that. I didn't want to destroy the pumpkin shape of the candle seen in a previous video, so I switched it out for this pillar that smells fantastic. Uh, yeah, it's not lit there, but it was earlier in the day, and I guess I forgot to relight it. Oops. And, of course, there were the candies tempting me the whole time. The pumpkin print scarf, when not draped over my chair, is used as a curtain tie when I want to let sunlight or fresh air into the studio. That's a Pitt Artist brush pen in sepia from Faber-Castell. That was one of our smarter purchases. It came in a set of, I think it was four or five pens, with various tips. This is the brush tip, but there's also a soft brush tip that's more flexible, and several fine tips in 0 0.3, 0 0.5, and 0 0.7. Yeah, they've come in handy. I have black pens and fine liners too, but I often prefer the sepia color. In my soap making fantasies, I use milk collected from my own fantasy goats and honey harvested from my own fantasy bee colonies. I could skip the hard and tedious work and focus on the fun part, slicing a new batch every day. And I'm surrounded by the aromas of gingerbread and bacon. Wait, that last one is in all my fantasies. I used my Fall Feels watercolor palette, or I should say I used three colors from it, Azo Orange, Dioxazin Violet, and Sap Green. I chose those colors because I knew I didn't want to do a lot of color mixing. Wow, that makes me sound like the laziest artist in the world. What can I say? Sometimes I'm up for a challenge, sometimes I'm not. It would have been great to have an actual bar in front of me to use as reference, but at eight or nine dollars for one, it doesn't fit our budget. 
I understand why handcrafted soaps are priced that way, though. It has a lot to do with the costs of producing in small batches, so I understand it. It's just not where we splurge. But when I'm in the shower, lathering up my $1 bar of harsh, chemical-filled commercial soap, it's all good, because I can just spray the tears away. I've mentioned before how my mother had her special drawer of treasures. It was filled with mementos from better times and gifts received over the years. One of the items was a box of three perfumed soaps from Avon. It was from their Bird of Paradise line. I didn't much care for the scent itself, but the decorative packaging and the molded shapes were irresistible to this child. Yes, I occasionally sneaked a peek into Mom's dresser to ogle the costume jewelry and Avon perfumes. The website basenotes.com has Bird of Paradise listed, and it looks like there's a lot going on with the top notes, heart notes, and base notes. Very helpful information, because I can now say, oh, that's why I didn't like it. Earlier, you may have noticed that I used a quill brush that was only to wet the paper for the initial washes. All of the paintwork was done with this Escoda Versatile No. 8 round brush. If you're new to painting, you might be wondering, oh, how do you choose which brush to use? I expect with some people it's intuitive, and with others it's a conscious deliberation. Since I was working on a small scale, this piece of paper is only like 5 by 8, I figured a thirsty synthetic squirrel brush would be overkill. In fact, when I used the Neptune Quill, which is a thirsty synthetic squirrel brush, to wet the paper earlier, it did leave a little too much water. So, yeah, there was some thought behind the choice, but mostly I just really wanted to use the Escoda. It's special to me because it was a gift from a viewer and because it's from Spain. And it's also one of the few brushes I have that's not from Princeton. I'm glad I used this type of stroke in several layers. It's stylized and kinda simple, and it works for me. What you're seeing on my nails is my all-time favorite nail color. It's from the Wet n' Wild Mega Last line, and, okay, this name, in my opinion, it's the best name ever, and it's I Moss Have It. It can appear very dark, but when you get the light on it, the color is amazing. It reminds me a little of Daniel Smith's Undersea Green, which is a fantastic green where you can see subtle separation of the various pigments, which is very much like this nail color because I can detect olivey green, goldish yellow, and something else that's dark and mysterious. I've had this bottle for, I don't know, maybe 10 years, and I don't want to give it up. I've revived it with some nail lacquer thinner, but I know that one day it will be unusable, and that will be a sad day. I won't go so far as to say I want to be buried with it, but, you know, I'm not opposed to the idea. So I did this piece specifically to include in the box that will be going out to the recent Fall Feels Prize winner. That's why it's this size, uh, to fit inside the box. You may have caught a glimpse of the beaded bracelets I was wearing during this session. They were crafted and gifted to me by a relative. Specifically, my brother Frank, who also draws and paints, and does some woodworking. And now, this too. Do you know people like that, who are skilled and capable in many things? 
I suppose lots of people have that to some extent, but some more so. I mean, he made me a brush drying rack and a desk for the studio. I should ask him to make me some soap next, yeah? In soap making, they get this sort of look by squeezing the soap mixture through piping bags and tips. It's so cool to see an entire slab of soap get covered with colorful piping. It's artful, like decorating a cake. Then it has to harden over the next one or two days. Once it's hard enough, but not too hard, mind, it gets cut into loaves. Those loaves are then sliced into bars, either individually or with a multi-cutter. Or, if the maker is really hardcore, they'll eyeball it with a kitchen knife. But don't take my word for it. Links are in the description. Some soap makers will add mica powders or biodegradable glitters to their soaps for extra bling, and I probably could have used my metallic gold paints from Kuratake's Starry Night set, but I didn't want anything shiny or sparkly on this piece, so I watered down some bleed-proof white and splattered it. I liked it so much that I then mixed in some nickel quinacridone gold and splattered that too. I'm happy to share this experience with you. It was one of those rare projects that was mostly stress-free. It might be an odd choice of subject, and it's something I haven't seen in watercolors before, so the fun factor this time was a solid 5 out of 5. Until next time, remember to wash your hands before snacking, and stay artsy, my friends! <laughs>